What's going on YouTube? KG4FJC here. Yeah, it's my buddy, uh, my buddy Paul. He's hanging out in shack with me today. Uh, this one's going to be probably one of two. Uh, we're going to do a, a couple videos on how to set up your VPN for All Star. Uh, this will ultimately be so you can receive incoming connections and manage your, uh, your node remotely. Uh, this first one is just going to be setting up a VPN in the cloud and getting the VPN established. And uh, then uh, part two will be uh, setting up the uh, port forwarding so that uh, everything can communicate with your Pi or with whatever you're running. Uh, I'm based off of Hamview IP, so most everything I got is Pi based. So uh, anyway, uh, let's get started. We'll stick around. We'll, we'll get into it. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up an account with a uh, a cloud service um that can be amazon uh digital ocean there's a bunch of different cloud servers out there uh one that pick one you like uh when you can afford amazon you can do it for one year for free um i've already you know, expired that um i actually use a let me go here a company called uh Carmentera. um pretty cheap four bucks a month let's walk through setting up a uh, server now, I've already got one running okay so I'm gonna make a new server this will be the part where you have to do everything that you know you're setting it up it's four bucks a month all right we're gonna do North America because that's where I'm at and we're gonna go with a Debian based here we're gonna choose our version let's go with the latest and greatest and this right here detailed view enable that I'll show you why all right server type we're going to go availability and you just follow the follow the numbers here all right so zero dollars for there zero dollars for one gig of ram and it's four dollars for 20 gigs all right so there's that and we want public network that's what we want and then enter in your password stuff and once you have your password in give it a name this one's going to be Demo VPN. Oops, got to be one word. Uh, VPN looks good. Then going down here, see four dollars a month. Create server, and this will take a minute. So once we do that, we'll let it do its thing, and I'll be right back. All right. So now that we've got our demo VPN set up, let's take a look. See, no, I don't want to save it. Uh, good in networks. And here's our public IP address. This will change depending on what it is. You're going to need that information. We can get to it later, but you're going to need that information. So uh, go ahead and uh, get PuTTY fired up, which PuTTY is going to use the uh, root for your login, uh, your username, and then this IP address, and it's port 22. And then your password is going to be the password that you created when you did all the stuff to make your network so uh let's head over and get that fired up all right uh here we are we've got our uh, our vpn up in putty and first thing i've got a cheat sheet that i can use and i will actually include this in the notes and it's all labeled uh step by step so what we're going to do first is we're going to update everything that needs updated which shouldn't be a whole lot but you never know it's always a good thing to do and we are doing this as root by the way so let this finish updating yeah it's gonna take a minute we'll come right back all right that's all done you can see it's all this stuff here so go back down um did notice uh right here please reboot the system when convenient so i'm gonna do that and then we'll be right back uh doing all this other stuff so let me get that going all right, now that you've got your system rebooted and um, you've logged back in by way of PuTTY, bring you back to your your uh, beginning screen here. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to enable it to do port forwarding. So we'll put in that and we'll scroll down. And what we're going to do is we're going to uncomment this line. By uncomment, it means take away the little uh, pound symbol. So that's done. Then we're going to do Control X to delete, save the buffer, yes, and enter to not change the file name because that would be bad. 
Uh, and then to make those changes take effect, copy, paste, boom, there we go. Now we're ready to uh, start doing uh, some of the fun stuff. That just made it so that it's ready to uh, uh, forward traffic that comes either direction, actually. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to install WireGuard. So let's do that. Pretty easy. App install WireGuard. Minus Y. And boom. Yeah, kind of quick, huh? Uh, then we need to go over into our WireGuard directory. And I'm just copying and pasting rather than typing. So we're in WireGuard. Now, here's fun. Oh, some, some fun stuff. We're actually going to make our keys. Uh, the keys are used so that uh, it knows it's talking with the correct machine and not somebody else. Okay. So now that we've made our keys, what we did was we, we unmasked them so we, we can actually read them. Uh, and then we generated the keys for our private key and our public key. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we are going to copy our private key. And to do that, oops, we are going to paste that. And then there, right there towards the bottom, that is our private key. And I'm not worried about showing you these because these this is a demo and it's going to go away later. So now I am actually going to save that over here. But you need to copy and you need to save that preferably in like Notepad or something. Um, that way you've got it because um, you're going to need it. You know, at least once. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create our file. This is going to be creating our configuration file. So it's nano DDC wireless or wireguard wg0.conf. And I want to put all of that in here. But we need to change some stuff. Uh, I like the 10.10.10 .10 .10, uh, subnet. So that's usually what I go with. You can actually make it pretty much anything you want. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would just go with that just because it's a lot easier. So up here at the private key, I just copied and pasted what I had saved a minute ago. So we've got this interface. This is our server that we're doing. All right, well, down here we're going to list a peer, which will be our all-star. So right now our private key, then address, it's going to create a virtual uh, interface on your uh, machine because you've got like ETH0, which is your standard Ethernet port usually. Well, it makes another interface that has a different name but uses the same physical connection. Uh, so we made an address for that. We're going to be listing on port 51820. And these rules here allow it to do some funny stuff like, you know, route stuff where it needs to go. Uh, let's see, then once you've got those in, control X, yes, save. Going to enable this to start after boot with this command here. Uh, that way if it reboots, uh, WireGuard will automatically come up. Boom, not really hard. And now we are going to enable WireGuard uh it'll just be spooled up it really doesn't matter because we haven't opened ports and we haven't finished the configuration file so we're just going to enable it and it is done so now i'm going to get things set up on my raspberry pi i actually just burned a new uh disk here or a new uh, uh sd card here i haven't even logged into it yet i've got a couple extra numbers so i'm just going to make one uh it's not going to be connected to anything rf wise but I'll make it here on my local network. That way you can see it'll talk back and forth to uh, the server. And we'll do some stuff just to prove that it actually is on the server. So be right back. All right. So once you've got your uh, server at the point we just stopped at there, you need to get into your Pi, into your uh, all-star node. So go ahead and SSH in. And... Uh, We'll start setting up on here. 
So, login first, and then to install, all we've got to do, bom -bom. yes, I want to proceed, and after we do that, we're going to, when that gets done, we got a long thing here. All right, so that's done. Now we've got to do our keys again. So, honestly, I ignore this. I just go in and get my keys separately. Um, and I'll show you what I do here. So, um, we need to know our uh, keys for uh, for this one. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, CD over into it. CD, ATC, wire, guard. And if we list, we've got... Client private, client public, all that good stuff. So we need uh cat. I'm not pulling it off of my cheat sheet here. <laughs> all right, so I need a uh, client underscore private because I don't believe it's in there. Dot p, which is right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to copy that one. All right, so then we need to uh, go into create a uh, config file. All right, so we need to uh, create a uh, wg0.conf file, just like so. And nice thing is, some of this is already here. So I didn't get my private key, so let me get that. All right, so first thing we need is the private key that we got a little while ago. All right, so we go up here. We need private key location here. Paste. Easy peasy. Down here, we're going to change this one to the actual address that we are on this machine. This one is going to be 10.10.10.2. Uh, .10 Remember, our server is .1. And... I'm going to add another line in here as well. DNS equals 8.8.8.8. All right. Makes it a lot easier since you're not really specifying everything you need your, that you're going to be doing in it. If you put the DNS line in, it'll uh, help it find where it's got to go a lot easier. So we've got all of that set up in here. Now we need to do our... Uh, our peer, which this will actually be our server. So let me grab that information real quick. All right, so we have the public key of the server. I'll come down to this spot, put that right in there. We're going to come down again because this needs to be changed. I'll move my mouse a little bit. This needs to be changed of the address that we created on the server. That was dot ten dot one. Okay, and here. We need to change this line to match our public IP of our server. All right, so with that in mind, boom, there's our public IP address. This is going to be 51.8 or 51820. That's the port. And the keep alive, that's a little quick. Change that to a 25. Control exit and enter. Control exit Y. And then enter. All right, now we can uh, start our WireGuard service over here. And it still won't come up yet because we still have to configure our firewall on our server. But we will take care of that here shortly. All right, so now that's started, and we're going to do the enable at boot, which is right here. Whoop, wrong one. <laughs> I like that behind the scenes. All right, so that's enabled at boot. All right, now we need to take our information that we got from our our keys from our client, and we need to go back over to our server, and the keys and information that we just created from our client, we need to do on our server. So let me transition it to here and to here, and here's where I listed my 
you know, public IP address and everything. So we need to, and I got a camera in the way of that one. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> um, let's see, where do I need to go? I'm looking at my notes here real quick. Um, so I need to go back to it's in here. So we need to nano wg0.conf. All right. So here we've got our stuff set up for our interface. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, I screwed that all up. I got to start over. All right. I messed up. I have to come back over here to my client. I realized one thing that I did uh, that was wrong. This actually should work, but uh, for simplicity, we're going to do 0 .0 .0 .0, uh, 0 0.0.0.0 stroke 0. That way, it'll accept the incoming connection from anything with a matching key. So with that, we'll save that. All right, now we will actually go back over to here. And we're going to edit our server file. And that should look like, all right, should look like that. This right here, again, we're in the server. It's the private key from the server. Okay. This is the address of the server. This is the port that it's going to be listening on. These are your IP table rules that allow it to forward traffic and masquerade. This is your peer, which if you want, let me go back over to that screen. If you want, you can actually do something like this. Let's turn on caps lock and we'll do that. That way it ignores that, but it's good for reference. Okay, you don't have to put this in. Um, under the peer, public key. <laughs> Look at that, and I'm glad I'm looking over it because Boy, I've got a big mess. Here we go. Public key. That. The allowed IPs. This is our all-star node address. And that is complete. I want to save the buffer, yes. I want to save that file, yes. All right. Now, we need to install, if I can copy and paste, we need to do our firewalling. So we're going to install UFW, uh, uncomplicated firewall rules, which is what it's supposed to be for. Now, before we enable it, something we definitely need to do, because we're typically going to be doing a SSH, which is your standard ports 22. All right, so we're going to allow access to 22. Otherwise, when we turn it on, we could lock ourselves out. And then you'd have to go through the web console, which is, yeah, it's doable, but it's usually kind of a pain. Right. And then the other thing that we're going to do is you saw where it needed 51, uh, 820 for a uh, port. We're going to add that one as well. And to start UFW, we're going to actually shut it down and then restart it, which doesn't really make sense, but trust me, W disable, firewall stopped and disabled, UFW enable. It just reads all of the new rules that we did. Yes, it may disrupt. I uh, hope you did port 22. Okay, so now our firewall is activated. And you can look and see what is there by doing that right there. That'll let you know what's allowed. So now, let's check, uh, see if everything worked right, which it probably didn't. Let me G show. Oh, I have to, uh, <laughs> I forgot. I need to actually uh, restart it here. So I'm glad that I, uh, where's the, uh, got to find my, da, 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 da. You know what? I honestly didn't make a, uh, a text for that. So anyway, um, W-G-Q-I-C-K, uh, up. WG0.conf. Actually, it's just WD0. All right. And now let's WG show. Look at that. Isn't that great? 
So yeah, I have to put that. I forgot to start it. Oops. Uh, I did enable the auto start, but uh, my notes are not 100%. Hey, but that's me. So with WG Show, it says our status, and it has hand shook within the last five seconds. So if we want to test that, ping 10.10.10.2. There we go. So that's working from that way. Now, if we go back to here, uh, WG show. Okay, it is captured a handshake. Great. And we can ping 10.10.10.1. Boom. So we can ping each other. That's good. Okay. Had a little technical glitch, but we're still right where we're at. We're over on the client. Even though it's communicating, I forgot you needed to refresh it. So we can do WG quick down and WG quick up. And that will refresh everything. So now if we go to here, there we go. This is not my public IP address. My public IP is like 216 dot something, something, something. So this is not my public IP. This is the IP. If we go, so if we go here, uh, IP, yeah, uh, address, our ETH zero, one nine eight twenty two. You see this right here? That was the same thing we got. One nine eight twenty two one sixty two. There we go. It's the same address. So now, any traffic that goes out of our all-star node here at our house will then go from here to our server and out from our server. We still cannot have traffic coming in. Uh, on the next video, I'm going to show you how to port forward to allow traffic to come in. Um, it's not really that complicated. It'll actually be a pretty short video. But in the essence of time, I want to try to wrap this one up. And uh, I've got some editing to do. Uh, I had some blunders, but we'll, uh, we'll get this uh, all configured. But you now have a VPN up and running in the cloud, and your all-star node is going through your VPN. Um, you can actually add, once you have the cloud server set up, you can add peers to that, the same process, or you can use the Windows or Linux, you know, whatever. There's other... You can add other peers to it. So you can do different stuff in your house. Um, your main computer, you want to go through your VPN, uh, whatever. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. So anyway, that has been how to set up a cloud VPN for use with All-Star, uh, particularly with Ham VOIP. So I hope you enjoyed it. You know, thumbs up, like, all that good stuff. Subscribe if you can. I got to get my views up. I need to start doing more videos. So uh, that is this one. Uh, What's the old saying? Uh, TTFN. <laughs> Catch you later, 7-3.